Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today, we're going to be looking at a uh, skill on positivephysics.org uh, in Unit 19 Electric Force called Electric Force. So to, the, the concept here is Coulomb's Law, okay, which talks about if we have two charges that are brought near each other, as you can see here, two charges brought near each other, they're going to put a force on each other, which we've looked at before. Uh, opposite charges will attract, like charges will repel. This is the equation that will tell us how strong the force is that attracts them or repels them. All right, so uh, we can see we got F equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared, where F is the force that's causing them to be attracted or repelled. So each one of them will experience this much force in the direction of repulsion or attraction. K is a universal constant. As far as we know, that's true everywhere in our universe. Um, and here is what that number is. So that number, as long as you're in our universe, as long as this isn't a Marvel parallel universe or something, uh, this will be the number for K, which is the electrostatic constant or often called Coulomb's constant. Q1 and Q2 are the two charges. Each of them has a certain amount of charge, um, a certain number of extra electrons, so to speak. And uh, that's measured in a unit called Coulombs. Okay, one electron has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th Coulombs. We're going to use that in a couple of our uh, problems. The first uh, couple problems on on the website. Uh, and then we have R as the distance between the two objects. I always thought it was strange they used R instead of D, but notice uh, in the equation here in the denominator, we have R squared. So we'll take the distance between the two objects, and that'll be the center of charge of the two objects, and we will square that in the denominator. Okay, so I want to make sure you can rearrange this equation. Um, if you are rock solid at algebra, uh, you could probably skip till you see me go to the next slide. But here's the basic idea. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to multiply both sides by r squared. So that's going to give you f times r squared, and then when we multiply by f r squared on this side, it'll drop out. Okay, that gets everything in the numerator. If we're solving for one of these things, it got the r squared to the other side. If we're solving for r squared, it got r into the numerator. Now, if you're solving for r, the next thing you're going to want to do is get rid of this F since it's attached to the R. So we divide both sides by F. You can see F came down here onto the right side. Uh, the force came down to the right side in the denominator. Then to get rid of this squared, because we want to solve for R, not R squared, we're going to have to square root both sides. When we square root R squared, we just get R. And on the other side, we get the square root of that whole rigmarole. So, um, and then that, that solves for R. You plug in your values for those four things, and then you multiply them and divide them, and then you square root the whole thing. If you're solving for either one of the Qs, Q1 or Q2, you're going to have to divide by the other things, whatever you're not solving for. So in this case, I chose to solve for Q1, so I, I divided by K and Q2. You see K and Q2 down here in the denominator. So Q1 equals F R squared over K Q2. All right, let's do two problems here. So first thing you see that it asks you to do is it asks you uh, for the direction of um, the force, the direction of the force. So we come over here, we see our left atom and our right atom. We can see that this one has excess electrons, and this one also has excess, excess electrons. That means this is going to be negatively charged, and that's going to be negatively charged. Well, like charges repel, so these are going to be pushed like this. That means that the one on the left is going to be pushed to the left, so you will put see if I can write small enough to get it in there. Left. All right, close enough. Okay, and then the one on the right we can see is being pushed to the right. So we write right. That's a little ugly. At least you heard me say it. Okay, so then we come down here and we find all of our givens first. Um, we see that K is always going to be 
9E9. Notice here it tells you how to turn scientific notation into the notation we use here. So that means 9 times 10 to the 9th. And the units for that, as we saw in the last slide, were Newton uh, meters squared per coulomb squared. Okay, that's right there. Okay, then we've got the two charges. Uh, so we're going to have to find those. We have four excess electrons. We know each electron has a 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs of charge. So when we multiply those together, we can see that the charge here is 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Then, um, and we put that in right here. I'm not going to be able to write small enough here. So this is the left one, 6.4 E negative 19. Okay. Good thing I'm saying this as I'm writing because that writing's a little sloppy with my finger here. I'm using my finger. I don't have the stylus for this. So, um, so this side we have seven extra electrons times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And that equals uh, 1.12 times 10 to the negative 18th coulombs. Okay, so 1.12 E negative 18. And then the units are coulombs for both of those. Coulombs, coulombs. Okay, I do want to point out here uh, really quick that you are not supposed to enter the negative. These are both negative charges because they're extra electrons. So the charge here would be negative and negative, um, but it told us do not write the negative. So we're just writing the total amount of charge. And then we've got R. R is the distance between the two things, which we see labeled here from the center of charge of this one to the center of charge of that one. And so we just write that in here. 3.02 E negative 10, and the units are meters. So finally, we have force. We know force is going to be in newtons, and so we have to calculate it out. So we just use our equation. This time, we don't have to rearrange it all. F equals K, Q. That's eh, not a Q. There we go. Q1 times Q2 over R squared. And we plug in each of these values. We plug in K right there. We plug in Q right there. We plug in this Q right there. By the way, it doesn't matter which one of those you plug in first because you're multiplying them and multiplication, the order does not matter. And then we divide by R squared, so which is this value squared. Uh, if you're unsure how to use your calculator doing that, you can look that up online, type in the name of your calculator and ask how do I do a square root or how do I do scientific notation, things like that. And if you're still stuck, I highly recommend you ask your teacher, show them your calculator because each calculator works a little bit differently. All right, our second problem we're gonna do is a little bit trickier. We see here they've given us the mass of this pith ball. And we're trying to lift this pith ball off the ground. Okay, so gravity or its weight is pulling down. We know weight is m times g. And the uh, force from uh, the charge here, um, which is our k, q1, q2. I don't have quite enough room here over r squared. Okay. So those two forces are fighting against each other here as we're trying to lift it off with this charged rod. Apparently this pith ball has a charge. We can see that right there. Determine all the unknowns in the, uh, all the unknowns the instant the pith ball begins to lift off the ground as the electric force matches the gravitational force. So there's the key. These two forces are equal. Okay. So we just quickly uh, do our weight here. So the weight 
equals um, m times g, which is the weight is 0 0.0669 kilograms times g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Keep in mind, if you are in a class where you use 10, make sure you plug in 10 there, and you get your weight, which in this case is about 0.656 newtons. Okay. Um, we uh, now know the force because, remember, the electric force matches the gravitational force. So that means the electric force also must be 0 0.656 newtons. Uh, K is the same as it was before, 9E9, 9, 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meters squared per coulomb squared. Okay, we see the charge on the rod is 4.28 E negative 7 times 10 to the negative 7th coulombs, and the charge on the pith ball is 4, even though it's negative, remember, to make sure that you, only, you never write the negative for the charge out in front, 4.47 E negative 7 coulombs, okay? And finally, R is the thing we're looking for. We're going to want to measure it in meters, okay? So we take our equation, F equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Since R is in the denominator, we want to move that to the numerator. F R squared equals K Q1 Q2. Two, and then we got to get it by itself, so we got to divide by the F. So K Q1 Q2 over R squared, over, uh, not over R squared, we're dividing by F. Remember, we're trying to get rid of the F, so we divide it both sides by F. And then finally, we're going to have to square root it, so we square root both sides. I'm just going to do some eraser math here. The square root and the square cancel. Okay, so we're left with R equals the square root of KQ1, Q2 over F. Okay, and once again, we plug in all of our values. We plug in K 9 times 10 to the 9th for K. We, we multiply that times Q1, which was the 4.28 times 10 to the negative 7th. Multiply that times 4.47 times 10 to the negative 7th. We divide all that by 0.656. And then finally, we square root the whole thing, and we get a final answer, R equals, um, uh, I think I forgot to write this one down. So um, R equals uh, whatever you get when you multiply all that together. I um, wonder if I've got that here. Let me see if I can find that. Logged me out. Okay, so we get we get an answer of 0 0.0512 meters. All right. Oh, I just forgot what I just said. I said it out loud and then I forgot it. Uh, 0 0.0512. Point zero five one two meters. All right, and you plug that right in here, point zero five one two meters. All right, so once again, just remember, as long as you uh, know each of the things on this list, okay, F is the force between them, K is this number all the time, oh, the force and forces in Newtons, uh, the, is this number all the time with those units, both Qs are measured in coulombs. That's the amount of charge on each of the two objects. And R is the distance between the two of them measured in meters. And you know how to rearrange your equations. You should be able to solve these problems. Good luck working through it. Get some help from your teacher if you need some help. And we'll see you next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.